I am Professor Pickleball, and welcome to Shortwave Story Hour. Today's story is The Invisible Boy. Let's begin. There is a neighborhood in the Bronx along the Harlem River where Fordham Road crosses University Avenue and right there by a big stone church and up a steep hill is where a boy lives. His name is Anton and he's known throughout the neighborhood for his bright smile and his insatiable curiosity about the world around him. One day while exploring the park near his apartment, he came across an old stone tower. Now, in his imagination, the tower was an old castle, and he was a pretend knight. So he rode up to the old castle on his pretend horse and tied it to a pretend tree, and then he poked his head inside. What he saw there was amazing, because inside on the dirt floor was an old wooden box, shimmering with an otherworldly glow. Oh my, it was certainly like nothing he had ever seen in the Bronx, and he couldn't resist, who could? Anton reached out and touched it, and in a bright spark of white light, he suddenly realized he had become invisible. 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 He looked at his hands, but no hands. He looked at his feet, but no feet. He ran outside back to the street and looked at his reflection in a shop window, but nobody was standing there right where he was standing. I know, very confusing. Well, it was strange, very strange, and also incredible. Amazed by his new power, he began to explore the possibilities of being invisible. What fun, he thought. He walked the streets of his neighborhood into the park where kids played basketball, but they couldn't see him. He walked right through the game, untouched. He sat on a wall and waved at all the people walking by, and they walked by without even seeing him. He, he saw Mrs. Plotkins pushing a, a cart up the hill and being a good guy. He ran up to her and thought to help her, but... He he couldn't. He touched her shoulder, but she never felt a thing. And it was then that he saw the problem. He tried to help Mrs. Plopkins push the cart, but he couldn't. He tried to grab the basketball in the game, but his hands went right through the basketball. He didn't know what to do, so he went up to Mr. Mario, who sold fruit from a stall on the corner, to ask for help, but Mr. Mario just looked right through him, ignored him, like he wasn't even there. Anton realized invisibility was both a gift and a challenge. People ignored him, and he couldn't help them. They couldn't see him laugh and smile, and suddenly he felt a pang of loneliness. And he understood that being invisible also meant being isolated. Determined to reverse the spell, Anton returned to the park, found the old stone tower, and there he poked his head inside again, and he saw a spirit hovering over the box. So he asked the spirit to make him visible again. And indeed, the spirit heard his words and returned Anton to the visible world. Anton walked the neighborhood with a new appreciation of the people around him. He realized being seen and heard was a precious gift of human connection. From that day on, he used his experience to teach others around him the value of being present and visible in each other's lives. 
As the sun set over the Bronx, he knew that the real magic wasn't being invisible, but in being part of a neighborhood that sees and appreciates others for who they are. Anton's grand adventure reminds us all that the greatest joy comes from being seen and loved for our true selves. The End